Good morning, happy Monday, happy new week to you. I come to share a weekly word, and this week's word is, what are you doing with what you've been given? I was talking to one of my girlfriends last week, and we were just happening to talk about our children. And she mentioned something to me about something particular that her daughter had been given, and she said something to the effect that she should have been given something better. And so my question to her was how long was she able to use what she had been given and she said well a little over a year or whatever and I was like well did she prepare for when that was not going no longer be usable and the answer to that was no and a lot of times we will do that God will bless us with something will give us a gift or give us something or somebody else will bless us with something and we don't use it properly or we don't use it appropriately or we don't use it while we can and then prepare for when we are no longer able to use it to be able to try to at least to replace it. We're not grateful in the season of what we've been given. We're always looking at that person saying, well, you could have done more instead of being grateful for what the person has already done. And even though we know that God has it all, yes, he can do the same in everybody's life. But it's not our season to have the same as Johnny or Judy. It's our season to have what God has blessed us with. He's anointed us with special gifts. Are you using the gifts that he's given you? Are you using what he's blessed you with? Are you being a good steward over what he's already given you? But you constantly want more or asking for more. I want to share a little story with you about two young men who were both given something to catch fish. They both had families and needed to feed their family. They had been going down to the river every day catching fish with their hands. Well, one of the young men would try a couple of times and he would give up and sit on the bank and watch the other young man. The other young man, seeing his frustration, would always share his catch of the day for him to have something to take home to his family. Well, miraculously, they were both blessed with some fishing equipment. Someone had been watching them, and because they saw the young man was very frugal in how he managed to catch the fish with his hand, I don't know if frugal is the right word, but he was ingenious, rather, in how he managed to catch the fish with his hand, He said, well, he can surely use this stick, the string, and just some live bait. So he gifted him with a stick, some string, and a live bait to catch his fish. And he saw how easily the other young man would give up and get frustrated with catching the fish with his hand. So he said, well, I'm going to give him the tackle, the the reel and rod, the, uh, the bait, the hooks, and a net. So it'll make it easier on him. Well, how about he still watched them and they went down to the river every day to catch the fish. But how about the man with all the equipment still sat on the side of the bank watching his friend catch the fish with his string and stick. He put that string and stick to good use. So he was able to catch more fish than he was able to catch with his hands enough to share still with his friend so his friend would have something to take home to his family and even an extra fish to sell. He decided to strike up a deal with his friend and he said, since you're not using your rod and reel, what I'll do for you is, if you would let me, I will provide you with fish for a month and I will provide you with your first night fish for your family if you would let me have in exchange all your fishing equipment since you're not using it. So the friends say, yeah, this sounds like a good deal. He's going to give me fish anyway. You know, he's real cocky. He's not using what he has, not making good use of it. So not that first night he did what he said. He gave him the fish. And in exchange, the friend gave him the fish. Well, he was able to catch more and more fish. So he provided his friend with a double portion of fish every night to take home to his family as payment for the equipment for one full month. But because he was able to utilize the equipment so much and share and catch so many fish, he was able to sell more and more fish 
and make more and more money while both providing for his family, his friend's family, and making and other families by selling fish. Well, after the month, the friend decided to take up and leave and move to the other side of the lake because that was where better fish was. It was a better area for his family, a better situation for him. And he had made his payment debt to his friend. So not only did he get to leave, he got to leave with his stick and his string, all the friend's fishing equipment, over to the other side of the lake with his family where he was able to catch more and more fish and provide a heartier catch for his family daily and sell more and more fish to the local families around the other side of the lake. His friend no longer had any equipment he no longer had his friend on his side of the lake to provide him his family with food. So he know, he now is going hungry with no fish because he didn't make use of what somebody else had already given him. And instead of his friend looking bitter and said, I got this old pole and this old string and this bait and saying, I can't do anything with it. He did something with it. He made an investment with it. He went fishing with it, and he saw how he can utilize it to even get more fish and get more equipment. That's what we need to do in our own lives. Utilize what you have. Build upon what you have. Make what you have get stronger every day. Instead of looking at Johnny over there who was blessed, and it may be your brother or your sister. Your dad blessed your brother or sister with $100, but he only blessed you with 10 so you, instead of using a 10, uh, you're upset because Johnny got $100. Well, Johnny blew through that $100 and you're just still sitting on 10 because you're mad because you didn't get the $100. Instead of utilizing that 10 and doing something with it. Sometimes your parents see you and God sees us and he knows our strengths. And it's up to us to utilize those strengths and gifts that we've given because another person could say, I'm going to take this $10 and buy me 10 lemons. Part of it, I'm going to make some lemonade. The other part, I'm going to make a lemon cake. The other part, I'm going to make a lemon pie. And I'm going to sell slices of the lemon cake. I'm going to sell slices of the lemon pie. And I'm going to sell cups of lemonade. And I'm going to make money. Now, so not only has you turned that 10, you've turned that 10 over, over and over and over and over again. Because you've made that $10 into something. Like I said, turning lemons into lemonades. You're not saying, well, because my dad had it, he could have split it up or he could have did more. He could have did this, that, and the third for me. Yes, yeah, somebody could always do more for you. But what are you doing with what you already have? What you have been given? Are you appreciative of what someone has given you? Why, if someone gives you $10 and you blow that, why would they give you 100 because you've shown them what you'll do with the 10. You haven't made good use of the 10. That's just like to say if a person gives you $100, why would they keep throwing money down an empty vessel that's going down the drain? It's like flushing good stuff down the toilet. When someone blesses you, be grateful for what they bless you with in the season they bless you in it. Utilize it. And when a person sees you utilizing something to good of what they give you, they're often out to give you more and sometimes they don't even need to give you more because they realize you have utilized what they've given you and you able to bless somebody else because you've been blessed every time i'm blessed i'm gonna bless somebody else how are you using what you have been given are you constantly asking god to give you this that and the third and he's already got you in a position where you're not appreciating what you have, you're not being a good steward of what you have. You are not being grateful of what you already have. When the last time have you said, thank you, God, for where I am? Thank you, God, for what you've given me. I thank you. This is what I'm going to do to work at it and multiply it. And sometimes when you fail in a person, see, you've tried to make something out of, turn a, 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 a small into a large they said, well, they tried. I'm going to make some more investment in them because I see they're willing to work. They're willing to go for it. Stop looking at mama. Stop looking at daddy. Stop looking at sister, brother, cousin, friend. 
Somebody has helped you get on at a company in the mail room. You got your mouth caught poked out because you think you should have got on as the manager. Well, you can't even come to work on time to deliver the mail. So why do you think they're going to help to elevate you to move you up to another higher position? Show that you're a good steward. You'll be the first one in, deliver that mail on time, deliver it in the order. And maybe you can move up in the company and say, but I remember when. What are you doing with what you have been given? And I ask you this, y'all, at the end of the year, to think about all the things that you already have, all the things that you've already been blessed with. The day that you've been given a day, what have you done with it? What have you done with, you, what, with what you've already been given? Use it. And use it wisely. Make good of the gifts that you have. Make good of the things you've been blessed with. And when people do things for you, I don't care if they have a mountain of cash. They don't owe you anything. You owe you. Use and be grateful for what they've given you and be thankful. Use it to the best of your ability. And stop looking at them like it's their responsibility to keep covering you. It's your responsibility to keep covering you. I want you to know you're loved. I love you, but God truly loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. And please use wisely what you have been given. Love you much. Bye.